Kind of upset. I was hoping to hit a thousand. Yeah, yeah. but eight hundred still. It was packed. Eight hundred still really no, good. Eight hundred in one place at one time at one night. Yeah, and it doesn't count everybody else who saw it during the month. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of people so, didn't see it. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people told me this. Mm -hmm. So what are the questions? I'm gonna start with like simple stuff. Like when did you know you wanted to be an artist, or did you ever know that you wanted to be an artist? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I started out as a writer. Like I'd always written my whole life. I used to draw when I was younger, but mostly I was writing. My mom's a writer, and um, I was interested in poetry, and she bought me some poetry books. Like uh, Sylvia Plath, who like subsequently killed herself by sticking her head in an oven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For oh, really no. dark, yeah. dark work. And then, um, like, Edna Sampasemalay, she's like a total feminist, and like writes really racy stuff. And, um, Anne Sexton, she's like a disgruntled housewife. Like all these women that you would normally not, you know, introduce, you'd show them normally. So I wrote poetry like my whole life, and then, um, and in high school I wrote a lot too, a lot of short stories. And then in college I wrote short stories. Um, I always took shot, like photos as well. My grandfather is like an amateur photographer. He passed away and he left me all his cameras. So and then I started totally taking tons and tons of photos. And, and I got to meet like the most amazing people. Um, but then I realized like this is so not for me. Like I thought, you know, being a photographer, like I can be a commercial photographer and work at it and then, you know, do my art on the side. And I was like, there's no way this is happening. Like I just want to be an artist. Lot. And um, it started, I did this project for like five years in New York called the Keys Project, where I used to find keys on the floor and I started collecting them. And then I started having these huge parties where people would come with keys and um, that was like really text based and photos and images and like art happenings, you know, where people came together. Like, when, like, did you always know that you wanted to like have an art, pro like thought provoking art, like art that like wanted to comment on something? Or is it always just like, oh, sometimes just pretty things are nice too? I think it was always just like questioning the world and like whatever I found interesting. Like when you write, especially poetry, they always teach you like to choose your words like very, very well. Like if you had to pay a hundred dollars for every word you used, you would choose your words like really well. So like that's sort of the challenge of an artist. When I started and to this day, I just make art because I really don't understand like half of the world. <laughs> but then yeah, like I made an art a piece about that. Like that piece of crashing into the books. It's like a metaphor for cuts and like budget cuts and art education. So I don't know. I guess it's sort of like my way of entering into a conversation with the world, <laughs> even if I don't really fully understand it. Um, so, besides, like, you know, changing from mediums, like, photography, like, um, writing, like that, how else has your work changed, like, over time? Um, oh. well, when I first started, it was all really interactive. Like, I would set up scenes. Like, I used to go to, like, parties and things, and I would set up scenes, and then, um, like, I did one where I set up this whole nature scene, like, with real grass and tents, and I made all these animal costumes, and people were supposed to come in and act like animals, like, in the wilderness. Like, I had all these, like, forests in the background. I made this whole thing, and then I would be there taking photos of them. But I guess now, a little different than that, I'm just coming up with ideas and concepts and making do you think you're going to be featuring the, uh, the piece you made for us, I Scream Therefore I Exist, yeah. anywhere soon? Oh, I don't know. I haven't submitted it to anything. Yeah? But it's definitely in the cards, I think. Very nice. I would love to show it again. Like, make a huge room. Yeah, that'd be cool with a floor wall. And, like, make it all like you're Do exactly what we want it to do. Yeah. 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 But and we I still did like a really true. close replica to that. Consider I couldn't tear down a pre-existing wall. We did pretty well. Yeah, See, the cool. thing is, when I met you guys, I thought that it was going to be upstairs in that room where the girls, like, crawling around on the uh, stage. So when I came up with it and started shooting it, I thought that that's where it was going to be. Uh, and then, um... I realized that it wasn't, but it was okay because we still it. No, because when we talked, we all had that idea that we wanted to feel like we were in the water, yeah. surrounded. So I was trying to figure out 
how we could like rig like four projectors. And yeah. Everybody had their own little ideas, and we're just like, how do we do this? Uh -huh. It was so upsetting when we found out we couldn't. I thought it looked perfect. No, it came out fantastic. I thought we did like the, you guys did the best job for the space. So. Right. Ignoring the fact that we're here, how was yes. your experience with the whole class? Terrible. Oh, <laughs> never do it again. I hate those kids. I hate those kids. <laughs> no, it was I wouldn't great. be surprised. I hate these kids too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome.